guano is the excrement of seabirds, cave-dwelling bats, pinnipeds, or birds in general. As a manure, guano is a highly effective fertilizer due to its exceptionally high content of nitrogen, phosphate, and potassium, three nutrients essential for plant growth. The 19th century guano trade played a pivotal role in the development of modern input intensive farming practices and inspired the formal human colonization of remote bird islands in many parts of the world. During the 20th century, guano producing birds became an important target of conservation programs and influenced the development of environmental consciousness. Today, guano is increasingly sought after by organic farmers. Composition Seabird guano consists of nitrogen-rich ammonium oxalate and urate, phosphates, as well as some earth salts and impurities. Unleached guano from favored locales, such as the Chincha Islands off the coast of Peru, typically contains 8 to 16 percent nitrogen, 8 to 12 percent equivalent phosphoric acid, and 2 to 3 percent equivalent potash. The fresh excrement of insect-eating bats can have nitrogen levels approximating that of seabird guano and high phosphate levels, but bat guano typically has less fertilizing value than seabird guano from arid areas because its nitrogen content is more easily leached within cave environments. History The word guano originates from the Andean indigenous language Quechua, which in its original usage refers to any form of dung used as an agricultural fertilizer. Archaeological evidence suggests that Andean people have collected guano from small islands and points located off the desert coast of Peru for use as a soil amendment for well over 1,500 years. Spanish colonial documents suggest that the rulers of the Inca Empire assigned great value to guano, restricted access to it, and punished any disturbance of the birds with death. The guanao cormorant has historically been the most abundant and important producer of guano. Other important guano producing species off the coast of Peru are the Peruvian pelican and the Peruvian booby. In November 1802, Alexander von Humboldt was the first European to encounter guano and began investigating its fertilizing properties at Colo in Peru, and his subsequent writings on this topic made the subject well known in Europe. During the guano boom of the 19th century, the vast majority of seabird guano was harvested from Peruvian guano islands but large quantities were also exported from the Caribbean, atolls in the Central Pacific, and islands off the coast of Namibia, Oman, Patagonia, and Baja California. At that time, massive deposits of guano existed on some islands, in some cases more than 50 m deep. In this context the United States passed the Guano Islands Act in 1856, which gave U.S. citizens discovering a source of guano on an unclaimed island exclusive rights to the deposits. Nine of these islands are still officially U.S. territories. Control over guano played a central role in the Chincha Islands war between Spain and a Peruvian-Chilean alliance. Indentured workers from China played an important role in guano harvest. The first group of 79 Chinese workers arrived in Peru in 1849, by the time that trade ended a quarter of a century later, over 100,000 of their fellow countrymen had been imported. There is no documentary evidence that enslaved Pacific Islanders participated in guano mining. After 1870, the use of Peruvian guano as a fertilizer was eclipsed by saltpeter in the form of caliche extraction from the interior of the Atacama Desert, not far from the guano areas. During the War of the Pacific Chile seized much of the guano as well as Peru's nitrate-producing area, enabling its national treasury to grow by 900% between 1879 and 1902 thanks to taxes coming from the newly acquired lands. Contrary to popular belief, seabird guano does not have high concentrations of nitrates, and was never important to the production of explosives. Bat and cave bird deposits have been processed to produce gunpowder, however. High-grade rock phosphate deposits on Nauru, Banaba Island, Christmas Island, and other raised atolls were not produced by marine birds. Since 1909, when the Peruvian government took over guano extraction for use by Peru farmers, the industry has relied on production by living populations of marine birds. U.S. ornithologists Robert Cushman Murphy and William Vogt promoted the Peruvian industry internationally as a supreme example of wildlife conservation, 
while also drawing attention to its vulnerability to the El Niño plus or minus O phenomenon. South Africa independently developed its own guano industry based on sustained yield production from marine birds during this period, as well. Both industries eventually collapsed due to pressure from overfishing. The importance of guano deposits to agriculture elsewhere in the world faded after 1909 when Fritz Haber developed the Haber-Bosch process of industrial nitrogen fixation, which today generates the ammonia-based fertilizer responsible for sustaining an estimated one-third of the Earth's population. DNA testing has suggested that new potato varieties imported alongside Peruvian seabird guano in 1842 brought a virulent strain of potato blight that began the Irish potato famine. Sourcing The ideal type of guano is found in exceptionally dry climates, as rainwater volatilizes and leaches nitrogen containing ammonia from guano. In order to support large colonies of marine birds and the fish they feed on, these islands must be adjacent to regions of intense marine upwelling, such as those along the eastern boundaries of the Pacific and South Atlantic Oceans. Post-depositional decomposition and ammonia volatilization of penguin guano also plays an important role in the evolution of ornithogenic sediments in the cold and arid environment of Antarctica. Bat guano is usually mined in caves and this mining is associated with a corresponding loss of troglobitic biota and diminishing of biodiversity. Guano deposits support a great variety of cave-adapted invertebrates, that rely on bat feces as their sole source of nutrition. In addition to the biological component, deep guano deposits of both kinds contain local paleoclimatic records in strata that have built up over thousands of years, which are unrecoverable once disturbed. The greatest damage caused by mining to caves with extant guano deposits is to the bat colonies themselves. Bats are highly vulnerable to regular disturbance to their roosts. Some species, such as Phylonuteris aphila, have low fat reserves, and will starve to death when regularly disturbed and put into a panic state during their resting period. Many species will drop pups when in panic, with subsequent death, leading to a steady reduction in population. Research in Jamaica has shown that mining for bat guano is directly related to the loss of bat species associated invertebrates and fungi, and is the greatest threat to bat caves on the island. However, when done with caution, extraction of guano can be done alongside marine bird colonies without causing them significant harm. Properties In agriculture and gardening guano has a number of uses, including as, soil builder, lawn treatments, fungicide, nematicide, and as composting activator. In popular culture, in Joseph Conrad's 1900 novel Lord Jim the characters Chester and Captain Robinson attempt to recruit the eponymous lead character for an expedition harvesting guano. The setting of Ian Fleming's 1958 installation in the James Bond series Doctor No is a Caribbean guano island, and the villain dies at the end buried in guano. In Stanley Kubrick's 1964 film Doctor Strange Love, Colonel Bat Guano leads an attack on the air base responsible for sending a nuclear attack order to bomb the Soviet Union. In the 1995 film Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, Jim Carrey's character attempts to save an African tribe from being dispossessed of a fortune in Bat Guano. See also Histoplasmosis, Phosphorite, Erycotelic Organisms, History, Bat Cave Mine, Guano Era, Peru, Guano Islands Act. References. Further reading, Cushman, Gregory T. Guano and the Opening of the Pacific World, A Global Ecological History. Cambridge. New York, Cambridge University Press. ISBN A9781107314314. Retrieved June 13, 2013 A. Haig, James D. on the Phosphatic Guano Islands of the Pacific Ocean. Retrieved June 13, 2013 A. Skaggs, Jimmy M. The Great Guano Rush, Entrepreneurs and American Overseas Expansion. New York, St. Martin's Press. ISBN A0312103166 A. Robinson, Solon. Guano, A Treatise of Practical Information for Farmers. New York, Solon Robinson. Retrieved June 13, 2013 A. Pacific Guano Company. The Pacific Guano Company. Its History. 
its products and trade. Its relation to agriculture. Exhausted Guano Islands of the Pacific Ocean. Howlands Island, Kitchen Islands, etc., etc. The Swan Islands. The Marl Beds and Phosphate Rock of South Carolina. Kissoms Island Phosphate. The Manhattan. Cambridge, printed for the Pacific Guano Company at the Riverside Press. Retrieved June 13, 2013. A. Tesk Chemica, James E. S. A. on Guano. Describing its properties and the best methods of its application in agriculture and horticulture. With the value of importations from different localities. Founded on actual analyses, and on personal experiments upon numerous kinds of trees, vegetables, flowers, and insects, in this climate. Boston, A. D. Phelps. Retrieved June 13, 2013. A. Africa, A. Teal. EO the limestone caves and hot springs of the Songwe River area with the notes associated guano deposits 12. The East African Natural History Society. Retrieved June 13, 2013. A. Chile, Pisces, Oima copyright. Nitrate and guano deposits in the desert of Atacama, an account of the measures taken by the government of Chile to facilitate the development thereof. London, Taylor and Francis. Retrieved June 13, 2013. A. Peru, Duffield, Alexander James. Peru in the Guano Age, being a short account of a recent visit to the Guano deposits, with some reflections on the money that they have produced and the uses to which it has been applied. London, Richard Bentley and Son. Retrieved June 13, 2013. A. Duffield, Alexander James. The Prospects of Peru, the End of the Guano Age and a Description Thereof with some account of the guano deposits and nitrate plains. London, Newman and Company. Retrieved June 13, 2013. A. Hollett, Davy. More Precious Than Gold, The Story of the Peruvian Guano Trade. Fairley Dickinson. ISBN A 1611473578 A. Nesbitt, John Colise. On Agricultural Chemistry and the nature and properties of Peruvian guano. London, Longman and Company. Retrieved June 13, 2013. A. Documents, Prospectus of the American Guano Company. 1855. Retrieved June 13, 2013. A. Coca, Robert Irvine. The Fisheries and the Guano Industry of Peru. Washington, D.C., Government Printing Office. Retrieved June 13, 2013. A. United States Department of Agriculture, Office of Experiments. Bat guanos of Puerto Rico and their fertilizing value. Mayaga One Quarter is, Pia Puerto Rico Agricultural Experiment Station. Retrieved June 13, 2013. A, external links, Pro Arbonos, Jamaican Bat Guano and Cave Preservation, The Dictionary Definition of Guano at Wikshinery.